Okay. So, when I was researching about this car, uh, I saw that there wasn't really too much on it. You know, there's videos of people running it and unboxing and whatever, but I wanted to make something because this is my first expensive RC car. You know, I've had Stampedes, Traxxas Slash, you know, a bunch of, I'm going to call them beginner cars because, you know, that's kind of what they were they're you know all more or less a 200 hundred dollar range two wheel drive and sure put upgrades in them but they're still technically speaking beginner cars the baja ray i was looking at it because i had my slash i liked it but i didn't i wasn't in love with the look so that is my Baja Ray. Obviously, there's no body on it right now. And that's the first thing I want to say about it. Is if you like to keep things nice. Especially because this body is $90. I would not recommend running it. Especially for, you know, your first couple times with the body on it. Um, <clears throat> I ran it yesterday. And the first couple times I ran it, I had the body on it, and but it was kind of like wet and rainy outside. Um, so it would slide, you know. It was and it was it looked awesome. It looks amazing when it's driving, and it feels great. But once it dried up, these tires are pretty grippy on asphalt. And thank God I had the body off because it was a little rolly. But I'm gonna put that up to my driving. Because I was trying to drift it. You know, it just kind of flipped. However, I stiffened up the suspension in the rear a little bit. Because I wasn't a fan of the stock ride height that it came with right out of the box. And I noticed that it was sagging a little in the rear. And the tires were just kind of up under the body a lot. On the point of the body... Um, on all the wheel wells and kind of a little bit in here, I took Gorilla Tape and just put it on the inside of the body to help with paint preservation. Because, you know, these tires, the rear ones especially, can travel all the way up here. And the body, you know, kind of stops about there. So I knew there was going to be rubbing. And I've seen that. Um, I'm actually going to go grab one of those pieces to show you okay so i got the piece here it is this is the um i believe it's yeah fender from over here rear fender so right here this little kind of gray area is where the wheels are actually rubbing through the tape um and if the tape wasn't there it would be starting to rub through the paint however fit and finish is always different and yours may not rub, but I would check for that just because, you know, this, this body is expensive. It's 90 bucks. Going back to where I came from with this, the, um, you know, again, quote unquote, beginner cars. This is amazing. I love it. I haven't gotten the chance to really, you know test the suspension out and go into dirt areas some of my first times are going to probably be in this video um i'm going to record this at different points these mud flaps do not come on the car um i just saw these on amazon even before i bought the car uh, they're ken block mud flaps so i bought those they're like 10 bucks but uh i think they're pretty cool something else i wanted to talk about is the suspension there are two shocks on each corner one of them is you know more of the spring and shock assembly and the other one is kind of just a damper this thing whoops i don't know what that was rides so nice it's very very planted this drives really really well um coming from 
you know, having a slash, and it was two-wheel drive, but the vehicle feel is absolutely amazing. Even without the uh, active vehicle control um, from Spectrum, like, turned on, it, it stays straight so well. But that active vehicle control is wild. I, this is my first, um, again, expensive, quote-unquote, RC car. And that active vehicle control system is that that blows my mind it's it's amazing i've never seen anything like that before even without it the truck drives amazing uh, and i prefer to drive without that because you know i i like the manual driving that's why i almost all of my cars are two-wheel drive because it's fun to drive like that you know you don't have the handicap of four-wheel drive you really have to drive the car <clears throat> The lights are also pretty freaking sweet. Um, there are these here. Um, they light up white, and you will see that in the future, but my battery is not charged right now. Um, on the front grill, there are three orange lights. And in the back, there is this little light bar here that lights up red. Those are pretty sweet. I like that. The spare tires are also really cool they are fully like these are real you know real tires you can use um and this is actually the first part i broke like a couple days into owning it um but it's also because i un i overestimated how much of a bump this thing could take and it kind of kicked over on itself and flipped backwards and uh just this part here broke, so I had to get a new one. These tires are pretty sweet. Um, obviously, they are official. They did branding with BF Goodrich. For comparison, um, oh shit. For anybody that you know, you have a ten scale like the Slash or anything of that lineup. This is a normal Slash tire compared to the size of them on here. Now, these are both 10-scale vehicles. However, I will say the Baja Ray is... It is larger, but it's not a lot larger. Let me go get my Slash for comparison. There are no electronics in it right now because I'm parting it out. But regardless, here is... The slash compared to the Baja Ray. You know, the, the wheelbase is almost the same. You know, you can see there's a clear difference. These are further back. But in general, like this is, that front bumper is just about even up there. You can't really see it behind the tire. But you can see back here, this goes out about... I don't know, three to four more inches. Um, so it's pretty sizable for a 10th scale. Flipping it over real quick. One of the reasons why I wanted this car is because of the, you know, the realism. That's what I was missing out of the slash. The solid axle in the rear. Ugh. I can't think of the name for this right now. It's leaving me. But... I absolutely love this suspension setup. It looks awesome. It performs awesome. And there's actually, uh, you might be able to see it, the tires are kind of towed in a little bit. Um, and these are, I believe, these, these are adapters. But instead of toe in, I think these are just straight. There is no toe with these. Um, I'm not entirely sure how well that affects performance yet but you know who knows i don't really know if i'm even going to use them because i love how it drives something else that was actually already in the car but i took it out because uh it didn't work with the battery that i had is the 2s spacer um so that's just part sitting on the side and these are um i'm assuming these are higher speed gears 
I haven't taken this apart yet. I haven't looked into the motor. I don't entirely know if these are higher speed gears because they almost look like uh, a servo goes into that just by, you know, the teeth, but they have, you know, the inside teeth, but they have uh, the numbers re written on them. So I assume they are speed gears, but they're also really small. So that's why I'm kind of confused. So something else that is, you know, new to me because I'm used to bodies with body clips is the screws that you, you know, use to take the body on and off. Right now, there's nothing under this. I uh, just laid it on there. But there are these little black spacers. Now, there's different sizes, and they go in different areas of the car. Um, so far, I haven't lost any. However, I could see how you could very easily lose this. So I keep them in the screw, and when the body's off, I lay them out in the position that they were in. So these two would be like this because that is how they go in here these other two holes down here are you know same thing there's all these little tiny posts all over the body there's two down here there's this one this one this one and this one and you know they're they're all over the place when taking these screws in and out i would not recommend putting them in with you know a um a power tool however i have because wow it's not fun on your hands and fingers you know to preserve the screws and not strip them i'd take them out and i would put them in with a screwdriver but they are you know you need a bit screwdriver because they are allen head or allen keys whatever you want to call it <coughs> At this point, uh, I'm kind of out of things to say. Okay, so I want to talk about the electronics uh, that are in this truck. Because I have never had, you know, anything with Spectrum Electronics. So it comes with a Spectrum DX3 controller. It's got a toggle switch for some extra channels and the receiver. It's got a bind button and the spectrum active vehicle control uh brake rate which is kind of uh how rough or how little the brakes are applied when you you know hit the brakes uh steering trim throttle trim steering neutral reverse throttle neut neutral neutral normal reverse throttle limit um and these lights are for the spectrum smart battery level this will not work unless you have a um, Spectrum smart battery. Turn on back here, hold of it, radio comes on. Something that maybe I screwed something up or you just have to do this for the first time because I think that's what it said in the instructions. My car did not come pre-bound. I had to bind it myself, but there are people that are going to explain that a lot better than I do. So as for the electronics themselves, the ESC is tucked up in here really nicely. And uh, the receiver is back up in there. Now, it is slightly inaccessible for binding. You're going to have to take the body off. But there's a button on it that you got to push in part of the binding process. The motor, I really don't have any complaints. Besides the cogging, which I think just happens, uh, they have a huge heat sink on it. There it is right up in there. Motor can seems pretty nice. It's pretty large, but I haven't had it get hot yet. Something else I wanna talk about with the motor is torque steer. This car, like up until I think halfway into the speed range and the throttle, you know, if you floor it, it'll just get squirrely, obviously, but you have to, if you want to go full speed, you kind of have to lean into it a little bit because halfway through the throttle, um, 
I guess the motor really kicks up and there is a lot of torque steer. Uh, personally, I don't find it that annoying. However, I haven't had it on dirt with the torque steer yet, um, but I'll see what that's like later in this video. The torque steer, if you don't know what that is, is essentially your car is going along, right? But when you floor it, or for instance, when this gets to half throttle, this wheel, this far wheel, kind of picks up a little bit and then it the whole car kind of turns that direction because the wheel isn't spinning on the ground it can lead to you know crashes it can be severe if you're just trying to you know get up to speed really quick i used the active vehicle control and i believe if i remember correctly it kind of uh, helped that out you know, with the torque steer and it stayed pretty straight. With no active vehicle control on, you're gonna have to do that manually. Okay, next thing I wanna talk about is uh, battery. So I got a uh, Gen Zace G Tech uh, LiPo and I've never had a big LiPo before. I've never had a normal size LiPo. I've always ran my cars off of um, nickel metal. I didn't really feel like dealing with LiPos. They seemed kind of annoying, and my, you know, usage of the cars can vary, and, you know, I was thinking, oh, well, what if I forget the storage charge, or whatever. It's really not that bad. Uh, if you're, if this is going to be your first, you know, LiPo car, um, that may be a little extreme. Uh, however, I've been doing... You know this hobby since 2016 um, I've learned a lot and I feel I can handle it this battery doesn't entirely fit easily I will say it goes in the door um, there's a little battery door here and it goes in there Hold on, sorry can't really see my camera too well so there's this little door here and the battery goes in there and the cable the cables hook up through this little um this little loop here and then they come around and they plug into um battery terminal so the trouble i've had is my battery it fits in here pretty snug uh, I have to put a decent amount of pressure on this door and really kind of, well, even now actually, you know, this, this little lever closes it, right? It won't open, but that's the only thing I will say with these G-Tech batteries is, you know, the size is kind of, it's, it's tight. It's nice. It's not going to, you know, move around, which is nice, but it is a little tight. Something I just read today is, I believe they were talking about uh, the sway bar link. Um, apparently, these can break uh, pretty easily. I have not seen that. I haven't had, you know, I haven't had this car for too long. But I'm also not um, really a basher. I like to keep my stuff, you know, in pretty nice condition. But I, you know, nothing to shelf clean. I use everything. I have, I have an original Claw Buster, but I still use it. You know, it's just how I like to run things. Um, with my experience with the car so far, I cannot recommend it enough. It looks awesome when it's driving. It drives really nicely. This is by word of mouth. I've never even driven a Traxxas UDR. But apparently the UDRs can be a little weird to control. Um, I've never driven one. This is purely by word of mouth. But if you're looking for, you know, the whole stadium truck thing with the solid axle. Not the stadium truck. Baja truck with the whole solid axle in the rear and independent in the front. I gotta say handles awesome torque steer mm, you know i kind of see it as whatever but for the price point 
I would also recommend this. I needed to buy a charger and a battery for this car. And I think it was still less than the price of a UDR. And that's even, you know, the Traxxas Unlimited Desert Racer, for those of you who don't know what I mean by UDR. That's even, the like, buying that UDR is also even without, you know, a battery or charger. Yes, it is. I believe it's wider and I think slightly longer because it's more or less a 7 scale, I believe. But I, I've, this thing has hit two curbs already at a pretty good speed because I had a skill issue when I was driving. It handled it really well. Nothing broke. I think it could handle bashing pretty well. Um, cause it seems pretty tough. You know, these, these front arms are pretty beefy. Uh, and especially because, well, again, you know, coming from a slash, I've never had the two arms like this. You know, these are, this is a nice setup. I really like this. Um, so for now, unless I think of anything else... I think that's it. Uh, I'm not used to doing these type of videos, so I've probably rambled on a lot. But let's cut to uh, some footage. Let's get some running in. Okay, so I'm out here now, and uh, I wanted to use that area, however, it's a little wet for my liking, and I don't feel like cleaning this you know, really deeply right now. Um, but I've driven it over here uh, off camera, and there's definitely a couple things I want to mention. Um, looks, like I said, oh, that was a lot of water. Well, not really. But looks amazing as it's running. But, um, I will say, very tippy. On asphalt especially, this thing tips over a lot. Now, um, chalk that up to the driving, especially in this case, because, again, I'm coming from a two-wheel drive slash in those vehicles, where they are very much not flippy. Like, the way, the way I have them set up, they don't um, tip over on asphalt just because of how I run them. And I mean, I run them uh, pretty hard when it comes to turning, but the tires and the suspension, they don't flip. This, if you take a, if you take a turn too sharp, too fast, it will flip. Um, but it surprises me, mainly because the uh, servo. Now, the servo is great, it's awesome. It's, it's really fast. Like, it's very, it's very good. But with that, it can feel a little twitchy. Um, when I'm trying to make a turn, I want to make it softer. However, with uh, how this servo feels, it does seem to be... Um, it likes a lot of little input. Oh, yeah. Check that out. And that's something else I've been waiting to test is jumping. That seems to jump real nice. <clears throat> Let's see here. Let's get low. Oh yeah. <clears throat> but uh... God, the suspension is so sick. Now, that might be a, uh, you know, a little drawback with the flipping, but the way it handles out here is so good. I will take that any day for handling stuff like this. Like, these are not small. I guarantee you my Slash or my Stampede will have a really hard time going over this stuff. Like, I'm gonna zoom in and watch this thing go up and down. 
when I go over this though. I'm gonna go over slowly. Look at that. Look at how deep some of that is. That's crazy. And <clears throat> again, I think something else that really helps this truck is uh, the big tires, technically speaking, right? So it's a 10 scale, but I showed you the comparison between the tires on this and the Slash. Oh yeah. And you know, they're bigger. Um, I'd say they definitely help out. And another point to that is grip. Um, I haven't had a chance to test these on really dry dirt yet, but on wet dirt, they grip up amazing. Uh, these might be the first stock tires I'm going to use at a fair race. Uh, I belong to a 4-H club. And because normally tires are always a problem because, uh, you know, like stock, stock tires really aren't always that good. And uh, you spin out and mm, loss of traction, whatever, but oh, nice. I think these are, these tires are amazing. And weirdly, I guess that makes sense because since they are the officially branded uh, BF Goodrich, if that translates from the big tire to the little tire and the tread pattern translates like that, well, shit, why don't we all get branded tires? Like, <laughs> if they perform this well even at a small scale, fuck, man. Let's get brand deals with everybody. Oh, right at me. That ah, almost slipped. <laughs> So, while I'm going to the next spot, um, I might as well just talk. So, as I've been using it, you know, just kind of normally now, it's dried out a lot. Um, that torque steer I was mentioning isn't terrible. I could see it being pretty bad and, um, you know, loose, loose material. Now, this technically isn't loose because it's kind of a top layer and then under it there's... You know, there's a little more, <clears throat> nice, there's a little more to it and it's kind of wet down there, but on slick asphalt, you know, it's a problem. Um, I can't say anything for dry dirt, but the torque steer is not much of an issue when you're off-road. Uh, it seems to be pretty good. Now... I'm gonna see what we can do with these two corners here because whenever I had my slash or stampede out here, I always loved connecting this corner. And it comes down here and it goes up there. And I would love to see that from this truck, but from the times I've tried it already, I've seen it flip. So I don't know, I'm not really sure how it's gonna do. Oh yeah, whoa. Ah, oh, there it goes. <clears throat> okay, let's try that again. I, uh, I just reviewed the footage um, because I really was not sure how that came out. And uh, I think I can do that better because the camera was a little high. Couldn't really see, couldn't really see the truck. You'll know what I mean. I still aimed high. I also just think I went to the bush because I can't see it. <laughs> yep. Oh. Wow. <laughs> ah, now I'm aiming it weird because I'm holding it different to get it lower. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> Getting out of that never would have happened. <laughs> Full wheel drive is completely different for me. All right, let's try this again. But I'm gonna hold it normally. Yeah.
Awesome. <laughs> a little s popping up on the side a little bit there. Oh, into the bush. Just wanted to make a quick segment. It's a couple weeks later and uh, it's uh, very dry out now. The asphalt is great. The torque steer on asphalt is almost non-existent now. Uh, I'm gonna floor it. And it's there, but it's so much better. It's really not that bad. Like, I can see it, you know, still being an issue in dirt, but um, in grass, it is pretty damn tippy. Um, and I'm gonna reiterate for the God knows how many time. It's probably because four wheel drive handles differently, but I feel like, you know, for what it is, I think it's it's a little uh, a little tippy for grass. Cause I'm going, you know, I do a quick run and then I I go to turn around and it's it's already lifting there. Before it wouldn't do that. <laughs> well, what I was using wouldn't do that. See. Right there, it's a good example. I just, I don't feel like that should be tipping over, but then again, you know, I did modify the uh, the rear to ride a little bit higher. So that might be the problem. <clears throat> but I would say you're probably gonna wanna just do that modification regardless, just for looks, because you know, when you stop, it's nice and level. But before the rear would just sag. And uh, I think it helps in running too, because under heavy acceleration, you can see the rear. You know, the rear drops down quite a bit. And I think that would that would definitely strip some paint. See that? It goes down quite a bit. But uh, yeah, small update. Uh, other than those two things, absolutely love it. Wow. Oops. Ouch. Wow, nice driving. Even for one finger, that was bad. Well, wow, two fingers. Way it goes into the mud pit that I'm pretty sure is behind that thing.